Well, hello everybody. Hope everybody's doing all right. Uh, welcome to another um, uh, episode of Embrace Live. Let me just introduce myself. Uh, my name is Dave Dixon. I'm uh, a member of the uh, leadership team over at Embrace Church in Darlington, which I absolutely love. Uh, and it's amazing. Um, and I get to serve over there with lots of quality people uh, doing the church thing and doing the life thing. And, and so just, uh, you know, the Embrace Live, even though I've just kind of said it's about, you know, about Embrace Church, it isn't. It's actually about the church. There's only one church, and I say this every week. And really, Embrace Live is about highlighting uh, just how amazing God is, what amazing things God is doing in our area, across the Tees Valley, uh, North East UK and beyond. And, and and part of that is is I'm able to kind of invite people to come and join me for an hour. Uh, we're here every week, 8 o'clock on a Wednesday till about 9. Um, you know, invite people from the, the church in all of its expressions and flavours all around um, and just spend a bit of time with them, really. And, you know, getting to know them, you know, getting to know, um, you know, their stories. Uh, a lot of them I've known for many years, uh, but I always find out something new about everybody, which is great. And that's a part of, you know, maybe I'm just nosy. Maybe is everybody like that. I'm not sure. Um, you know, we must be. Otherwise, why is reality TV so popular? And that trashy stuff is because we're all just interesting people, aren't we? Who's, you know, maybe you can post online. If, are you a people watcher in a non-stalkery kind of way, um, in a safe kind of thing? But you know, uh, we all we're all interested in each other's lives, aren't we? And listen, you know, what I'm saying about posting online. Listen, we want to make this um, really interactive, as always. Every show. Welcome if you're tuning in live. Brilliant. Thank you for kind of setting your reminders and being here. Uh, but you're just as welcome if you're catching up a little bit later on. I realise not everybody's able to kind of do the live thing. But you know what? If you can, it's really worth it because we really want to make this an interactive show. We want to make it like, you know, an opportunity. I mean, Tony Grange, our wonderful guest tonight, and we'll go over across and see Tony in a moment just to see how he's doing. Um uh, you know, we were just chatting just before we kind of came on air, really, just saying how, how we enjoyed just chatting, really, and just hearing, you know, you know, people's stories and everything else and, and having that kind of informal chat and asking questions. So this is your opportunity to kind of, you know, comment and question as we go through. So I can see Tony's already saying hi. Thanks, Tony. I can just see my comments on my other monitor here. Uh, and so we'll post those as we go along. And uh, and so, you know, please, you know, feel free tonight, you know, and in every episode, really, just to post your comments and your questions for our guests. Uh, and we'll make time to respond to them as we as we kind of just hear from them. And we'd love that. I know Tony's very keen for that to happen tonight in particular. Um, so, you know, hi, Tony. Yeah, like I say, thank you, Tony, for uh, kind of uh, tuning in. And those of you who are, are tuning in, listen, I know we've got more than Tony online. So don't be shy. You know, please just you know, put a quick comment on Facebook. Just say, you know, hi, yeah, just say hello. Maybe tell us where you're tuning in from. And it would be really, really helpful if um, if you could help us kind of widen the audience for Embrace Live. Um, and just, you know, because it is about the church. And like I say, it's about God doing amazing stuff uh, through his amazing church, amazing people. Um, and we want to, you know, broaden that. Even the people, you know, maybe you've come across this, you've stumbled across this live stream as you're kind of flicking through your social channels and, and you might even not even do the uh, the church thing at all. You know, you might not, you know, be in that kind of relationship. You might not know Jesus at all, and you know, you know, you know, lots of different things like that. And we listen. We want to, you know, we won't bash you over the head with a Bible. We just want to share a bit of, you know, who Jesus is, demonstrate His love for you, and um, you know how uh, He's making a huge difference. How He's transforming our lives and transforming. It's a present tense. It's a process. We are not saints. We are not, you know angelic in any way i'm just looking at tony maybe tony might be actually i'm looking at my other monitor see what you know maybe he's uh you will see um but you know obviously we just want to kind of encourage you just want to you know connect with you really um and so listen it'd be really helpful if you could uh do one thing for us actually just to help us as well as sharing on your social channels this link so do that now get sharing now please that would be brilliant um but also it'd be really helpful if you head over to our youtube channel after this or or june if, you know if you want to do a bit of cyber slacking as you're listening um and just subscribe to our youtube channel because we'd love to be able to have that address on there youtube works in that you need a certain amount of subscribers before you can get your own dedicated address and the one that we're after is that one on screen uh, but we do need people to head over you know, do the usual kind of thing, subscribe, hit the like button, you know, hit the notification bell, just so you can keep yourself updated. 
Um, I tell you what, I've rambled on already. Why don't we just head over to Tony now just to see, um, actually, if he, I can see my other monitor to see how he's doing tonight. Actually, it's just a kind of occurred to me as we head over to you, Tony, just to say hello. Uh, looks like we couldn't get Tony Grange tonight. Uh, it looks like he was, you know, so Conor McGregor's filling in for him. You know, maybe you get that one a bit too often. Yeah. I thought I'd had a bit of glamour with the, with the lights and my sunglasses and things like that. I know you're used to having the likes of Pete Conroy and uh, John O'Connor, so I thought I'd glamoured up a little bit. Yeah, you're that, definitely sorry. doing that. Yeah, definitely a big improvement there, mate. Absolutely. You know, like you said, I mean, there's only so much I can do with my software on here, but I don't actually do anything on here for you. <laughs> Absolutely. Are you doing well? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm doing spot on. If you okay. are wondering, I've got conjunctivitis. So uh, to stop you being sick, I thought I'll wear the sunglasses and it's helpful for me too. Yeah, we understand that, mate. You know, like I said, actually, stop us being a full, you know, full facial mask would have been better. But you know, thanks for making a bit of an effort. That's all right. <laughs> cool. All right, I'll, listen, Tony, I'll come back to you in a minute. It's okay. Just uh, let me just kind of ramble on a little bit. But there's Tony. You know, listen, it's a great opportunity tonight. Okay, we're going to hear Tony. You know, an amazing guy that he is, and his story, and and what he's doing. He's, he's you know, again, how he's living out his relationship with Jesus, and how we, you know, Jesus using him in loads of different ways. And and this will be a great opportunity to do so. If you haven't already, share this uh, stream link with your friends and your family, particularly those who don't know Jesus. All right, and uh, just you know, don't. Just, just get sharing as many people as possible, all right? Whatever your social groups. If you, you are a church goer, it would be really helpful just to kind of, you know, spread it, you know, like I say, the word in your socials and for your church, kind of, you know. So if you've got a group or a page, why don't you whack it on there as well? That'd be really helpful as well. Because like I say, we want to celebrate um, everything that, you know, God is doing in our area through his amazing people, the church, all right? Um Tony's already got a bit of a fan club going on with, uh, you know, Tony Grange, that is, got a fan club with Tony Fraser from Embrace Church, who's already showing the love for the shades already. So that's good stuff. It's, you know, maybe I should have brought mine. I don't know. There's only so much you can do with this. You know, it just seems, I don't know whether it's a visual effect, but I seem to be getting whiter or greyer on the top. I don't know whether that's, maybe I'll have to look at what the filter is that I'm using. Okay. So... I'm going to run this uh, leaders intro, a little bit of an intro, and then we're going to head over and we're going to, you know, obviously listen and, and chat with Tony um, throughout the session. All right, throughout the show, should I say. So here's the leaders intro, and then we'll chat with Tony. Here we go. And here we are, sir. How are you doing? All right. You okay? Yeah, good. Yeah, you. yeah, you can hear me. Everything. Yes. I'm just going to put this on the screen already just to show you. I wasn't just making up. There we go. Tony's loving the shades already. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you know, like I say, you're a good looking fella, but you've just, you know, with the, with the lights and the shades. Awesome. Awesome. Definitely. So, Tony, um, I, I was trying to think before we came on, obviously, just preparation, as I always do, in a non-kind of stalkery kind of way, I was just kind of reminding myself, you know, how we kind of originally kind of met. And if I remember rightly, it was many years ago, I think it was, there was, I used to be involved in a, an event called Harvest, and there was, I think it was a Harvest staff training day up with somewhere, Lumley kind of area, and I think that was the first time I met you. I think you came along to that, and you were getting involved somehow, and uh, I ended up giving you a lift back, I think, you know, if I remember rightly. So, I don't know, can you remember that? Or have I just completely made that up? The first time I thought I remember you meeting you, I think you had an office somewhere. Were you working for Youth for Christ? I wasn't, no. And, uh, it was some kind of involvement. You were involved in running a football team. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah, 
And uh, I remember you asking me to join, and I thought, "Flipping, you've never seen me play football or anything, and you're asking me to join your football team." Ah, yes, yeah. Well, you know, probably by that question, you know, you can tell our recruitment process was like, you know, we we set ourselves very low standards and fail maintain them. Pretty much, we'd have anybody, you know, they, they let me play. So, you know, there we go. But yeah, yeah. No, you know, kind of I mean, obviously, yeah. Yeah. how come you turned us down? You know. I can't remember at the time. I think I'd packed in. I, I had a love hate relationship with football. Always really loved it. Then yeah. got sick of it. And uh, Saturdays, it's just Saturdays are such a big deal, and then it takes yeah. you full day out. So yeah, that was probably it. Yeah, well, well answered. Of, well answered. Yeah. So you know, obviously, it was nothing to do with the transfer fee or the signing on deal or anything like that. I think I might have been. I, I was playing for Stokesley. Uh, for, for quite a few years, I might have been playing at the time as well. So. Right. Yeah, you missed out. You missed out. The people think I'm talking about the Northern League, Stokes. I'm talking about the Teesside League and uh, Stokes <laughs> District League, Stokes. So I don't want to be off to uh, exaggerating from the start. <laughs> nice one. All right, cool. Uh, Tony, what you know? I mean, obviously, I've, I've known you for a while now, but um, just for for people who maybe who haven't met you before, and, and I find that hard to believe. Uh, you know, T side legend that you are. Um, why don't you kind of just put yourself in a context for us? You know, you know, uh, you know, you got family. You got what do you do for a day job? That kind of stuff. And then we'll we'll yeah. maybe chat a bit further in detail about your story and things like that. Yeah, um, father of four, four kids, age eight and under, married to a doctor, uh, live on Easter side by the grace of God. Yeah, it's a phenomenal place to live. Got a. Um, the second biggest garden in Easter Side. Um, I'm a counsellor on the estate. I'm uh, um, a uh, Tees Valley Community Church as a community worker in East Side. Part of a part of a team we've started up called Health Village Easter Side. Right. Um, for people that lead healthier lives, healthier spiritually, physically, relationships, eating. So we we've got lots of we've just started that last year. We've got lots of plans and lots of things that we're doing on the estate. Nice one. I'm counsel on the estate. The uh, the mayor's got a chief executive team. If you know what that means, he's got like a handful of people, and they've all got different roles. Man, is neighbourhood safety so to help uh, Middlesbrough be a safer place, basically. So working in working in the estates, working alongside the police and things like that. So all yeah. of that keeps me very busy. Yeah, and, sounds uh, like you. To be to be honest, not a single part of it that I don't like. I I, I love I love the job, love my wife, love the kids. So I'm very like just incredibly grateful for God for the yeah. life for the life that I live. Same my wife, while I'm like how blessed and how fortunate we are, and how we know that I know my wife's from God. I know the house is from God. I know that know the kids are the jobs, and it's God's just uh, led us in every step. Yeah, amazing. Incredible, Amazing. Lots. I mean, I'm trying to jot down a few things there just to kind of come back at you. You know, obviously amazing. You've, you know, I mean, first thing that you know, hit us with a, you know, married to a doctor, which is always handy, which is good. Um, you know, like you say. Yeah. But then, you know, the big one was four kids under the age of eight. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. We can hear a few of the kids yeah. actually in the background, like you say, which is good. All right. Yeah. yeah. That's good. You know. It's amazing that you have energy at all to do any of the other stuff. Never mind, you know, parenting four kids under eight. I, mean, I bet they keep you busy. Yeah, parenting is without a doubt the toughest, most time-consuming energy. Also, the most fun, the most like full of pride yeah. with them. And uh, yeah, being a parent is incredible. Is it is the best? I think with uh, with all of my with when we first like when. When me and Steph were were married, I can remember, Phil, Phil Cartmill. Have you had him on here before? Yeah, we did. When we were like, you know, again those really low levels and just accepting anybody a little bit like the football, you know, <laughs> quite early days. Uh, yeah, Philip came on. Yeah, yeah. Well, I remember when um, we were doing a like an outreach night in the pub where we pray for, give prophetic words and pray for people to be healed and things yeah. like that. Remember Phil Cartmill coming in saying, "Do you and your wife ever talk about?" Um, how, having babies and that and I said no and he said I, I just see you pushing a pink push chair and even though me and Steph weren't planning on having a baby at the time the contraception didn't work and then uh nine months later we had, had a baby girl wow. so we know that was uh the Lord spoke that and then we, I had th we had three girls and then uh when we had a scan for the baby boy 
um, we were on one of one of the live connect things before because we couldn't go into church at the time, so we we're doing things online like this. Yeah, yeah. Sammy Joe, one of the girls who was on it, she said, um, "I know this is strange because she knew we, we still had a baby at this point." She said, "I know this is strange, but I feel uh, God saying one Samuel one twenty seven, and it says God's heard my prayer and granted me a boy." Right. And I'm like amazing we've been we've been praying for a boy and just today we've had a scan it was the 12 week scan but it was too early but we know all all the kids are just a pure gift from god and yeah, uh amazing. having a boy as much i wouldn't change the three girls but having a boy is just the uh yeah. cherry on the cake yeah uh yeah nice one mate uh, I can't relate to that. Can, you can't, you because know, I've got. Well, I was going to say unfortunately. I shouldn't say that. No, they are absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, four girls in Dixon Towers, um, and uh, you know, so I haven't got a, I haven't got a lad. But you know, there we go. I'm more than happy with obviously those wonderful you know kids that I've been blessed with. They're not really kids anymore. You know, most of them. You know, like you said, all grown up. Certainly not under eight. Wow, was it? Um, the other thing that actually with just as much glowing and pride that you threw in there in your you know intro mm. was that you said you've got the second biggest garden in Easterside. How do you yeah. know that? Have you gone round and measured them? You know, literally as part of your is this your councillor role? How big is your garden? I don't. Uh, I grew up in the estate. I grew up jumping over people's back gardens for fun. I know the I know the gardens <laughs> on Easterside, and uh, where these. There's four houses on the outskirts of Easterside, which we live we live on one of them. And these, like our house, has got a door uh, hasn't got a door number. It's got a door name. So we've these were these were uh, built before anywhere. Yeah, these so posh, just got you're a bit posh, very posh. Yeah, yeah. I've skipped middle class and went straight to upper class. Totally. Yeah, I thought that. You, you just get that impression. It oozes from you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Um, and then, obviously, I mean, it'd be good to talk a little bit more about this in detail, but, um, you know, you, you mentioned latterly you've kind of got into, uh, you know, you're a counsellor for the state, you know, which is amazing. And, um, you know, it'd be great to hear, you, you know, how that came about and your thoughts and what does that look like. But you said that you're kind of responsible for neighbourhood safety. Does that mean you're an enforcer? Is that, you know, you're going round and uh, just making sure everybody's behaving no, themselves? It's, it's better than that. It sounded too good to be true when Andy Preston, the mayor, said yeah. what, when you're on the chief exec team, what your job to do is is to set the plan and and the vision for the council to to pull it for them to do it. That's their paid job to do it. That yeah. sounds like too good to be true, doesn't it? But then when I was talking to the council and the officers, that is my job oh. <laughs> to to come up with an ideas to to make Middlesbrough a safer place and a better place to live, and for the council to do it. So it's it's a it's honestly a dream. It's it's incredible. Amazing. And, uh, well, I'll tell you what, let, why, why don't we chat a bit more about that a, a little bit later on? Because, uh, you know, it'd be great to hear a little bit more detail about that. Uh, I'm just going to put a couple of posts on, on screen. Obviously, uh, Tony's again showing the love there, just saying brilliant again. It was, it was She posted that while you were talking about your kids and family and so on. Uh, and then, obviously, just to kind of balance things out, because we don't want to be too gushy on here, uh, the amazing Mr. Paul Saxton, uh, you know, obviously, just for his encouragement, posting that on there for you. I just thought you can, you know, as the enforcer, um, you know, maybe sort him out later, whatever. Well, I can remember doing a, a Christian union in Paul Saxton's school, and the yeah. kids never called him Mr. Saxton. They just called him Saxton. So if I was a teacher, I wouldn't have put up that. I think we yeah. could have laid the law down a bit more. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. I'm a teacher, and they definitely call me Mr. Dixon. So, you know, I always say some of us have got standards, not just Saxton. You know, there we go. Um, Tony White, I mean, obviously, it'd be great. You've told us a little bit about, you know, your life now and what you're involved with and how amazing it's going and the different roles that you've got. But, you know, it'd be great to hear your story, really, you know. Um, you know, and by that, you know, for I generally, you know, maybe people are tuning in or catching this who don't do the church thing, really. When we talk about our stories, it's a little bit, you know, like your life story, but in particular, um, how how did you get to that point where you made yeah. a decision to, you know, you know, you to believe that Jesus is who he says he is, and um, and you know that he, you know, again, died and and. On the cross, as we, as we come to celebrate Easter this Sunday, and uh, but then you know rose again, and you know and saved, you know, you know, did that for a reason, uh, and the reason is to you know build a bridge across 
the gap that was made by sin to back to the father and so you know again we you know how we can how you came to that point where you kind of said yeah i, I you know i believe you, I, you know again i'm going to live my life for you jesus uh you know what were circumstances like before that you know how did you get to that point and, and what's life been like since you know those kind of general three questions is what i ask i think i all, all never remember not believing in god i i right. always i always used to pray I'd never knew another Christian. I'd never been to church. I just believed the Bible, even though I'd never read it. So, uh, as weird as that is, right? Yeah. Probably as a as a young man, um, used to love love boxing, love fighting, loved women, loved drugs, loved partying, loved dance music. So, I basically I loved uh, enjoying myself. So, however I could uh, enjoy myself, I would do it, and probably take that to extreme. That when I when I buy that that was quite short lived for me, yeah. not the boxing because I always felt there was there was goal in terms of pleasure and, and sin it had a it had a short shelf life for me. It wasn't fulfilling. It start I started off thinking it was the best thing ever and this is the meaning of life, but then it the, the fun went quickly. Yeah, and I can remember on a, I was on a night out in Middlesbrough and uh, I'd had a fight with a bouncer probably tells you the way I was living at the time. I was walking through Middlesbrough Town Centre and there was a bus and they were giving out soup to heroin addicts and prostitutes, drunks like me and my friends. And they were tell talking about Jesus like they knew him personally, like he was a friend of theirs. And I was really fascinated. Like I was just hanging up every word. Right, yeah. And <laughs> what really stood out to me as well as Middlesbrough on a, on a Friday night being a rough place. Everybody was torturing them. Everybody was taking the mick out of them. And then they were just smiling in return and being loving and being kind. And, and I thought, why would anybody act like that? I'd never saw or heard of anyone act like that. Yeah. So that spoke to me. And they gave me this book called The Crossing the Switchblade, which is, a, if you've never read it, it's incredible. I would really recommend yeah, it. You can get them on Amazon. Yeah, you can get on eBay for about three quid. Um about a preacher in the Pennsylvania in the middle of nowhere and God spoke to him to go and work with the gangs in New York. This in 1960s when heroin had first hit. And it talked about how he was praying people and people were getting set free from drug addiction. Yeah. And I thought, if this is real, uh, if God speaks to you, he's got a plan for your life and you can en encounter this thing called the Holy Spirit, which is a better buzz than drugs. I thought, this is what I want. This must be the best way to live. So I was still living exactly the same but praying and i started uh i started praying but i didn't really know how to pray to pray do you know what i mean yeah. my prayers were mainly look after people who died and things like help me be a better boxer things like that and then probably two years later i was on i was on all day in a beefer in a nightclub miles away from god and uh i just felt uh the presence of god which i wouldn't have been able to articulate at the time. I just felt an amazing feeling. Yet I felt terrible about this at the same time. I felt terrible about the way I was living. I felt uh, just taking drugs, spending money, you know, all that, all just all sin. Yeah. And uh, I felt God speak to me and say, you've been asking me for things. I've been giving you them. Now I want you to give something to me. I'm just repeating this for about half an hour. And I thought, what can I give God? But I thought, he must mean taking drugs is bad. I'm going to stop taking drugs. So I never, I never took any drugs since then. And I started reading the Bible. And uh, in Romans 12, it says, in view of God's mercy, offer your body to be a living sacrifice. So I knew when God was saying, I want you to give something to me. It was like a light bulb. Ah, that's what God's saying. Give something to me. He's asking for me to live for him. Now, because I was arrogant when I first became a Christian, I was like, nobody can tell me how to become a Christian. I'm not going to church. I don't need to go to church. I'll just read the Bible by myself. But like Ben and I had never, apart from this one night, I'd never spoke to Christians. Never had anyone. So I was like reading the Bible. I didn't know the difference, Old Testament, New Testament, read about Jesus' life, Ma Matthew, and then come to Mark and then start reading again. And I confused because I'm like, I thought Jesus had died and I thought he was never knowing. I was probably reading the Bible by myself for probably a year and a half until I started going to church. I started going to the church on Easter side. Right. And this is no disrespect to the church, but they're all 
elderly women and they just didn't really talk about Jesus very much and they weren't really on my wavelength. Yeah. So it was probably about five years later when I got a Christian friend, Peter Conroy, met my wife, Steph, uh, Ben Falaja, and then having Christian friends to pray with, to talk about life with, and then my, that's when my faith really started skyrocketing. Because I would say in them years previous, the Christian life wasn't really uh, a fun one, I would say, because it was like, don't do this, don't do that, trying to trying to do it by myself. Yeah. Not the kind of adventure that it was supposed to be, not seeing many miracles, not seeing many, uh, I suppose, prayers, prayers answered, not seeing much fruit from the way I was living because it felt like it was by myself. I had nobody to invite anything to. So, yeah, so when I become part of Tees Valley Community Church, I really do owe them a lot because when you've got a brotherhood and a, and a family and resources and something to invite people, that's when my, my faith really started taking off. That was about 2007. Right, yeah. Let me um, let me just ask you a couple of a couple of things on that. I mean, obviously, it's interesting that um, you know you you always believed in God. You always believed in who yeah. you thought God was, and, and and like you say, growing up and stuff like that, and then um, getting involved in in lots of different things, kind of living a lifestyle which wasn't very uh, godly yeah. like, you know, and uh, and enjoying yourself and partying and and so on and yeah. um and, and so on. so um. You know when you um when you, you met me people on the on the the bus what you know was it um was it was it that team challenge was it a team challenge bus team at the time yeah. yeah was Peter Conroy on there on there at that Peter point? Conroy was there yeah yeah but uh, he wasn't the one that, he wasn't the one talking to me I've I, I have never actually met the lad who was talking to me right I only remember Pete Conroy because he's got very distinctive eyes so he's <laughs> he's like come on. Oh, they're beautiful aren't they yeah yeah absolutely like, you just get lost in the and, 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 and say something and then uh, <laughs> yeah yeah I just always I always remember yeah yeah it's interesting but like you said everybody was kind right. of giving you know, abuse and torturing them and and they were just you know loving on people really you know again just taking it and smiling and you know giving out the soup and so on uh, but I'm interested the, um, you know because you said that you know obviously a little bit later on you were in hol- on holiday in Ibiza you know obviously enjoying yourself yeah. and in a nightclub, yeah. and and you talk then about the, you know the presence of God coming on you, and um, yeah. I don't know if you caught the show last last week, and you know if it, obviously they're always available to kind of watch and so. But you know, a good friend of ours, John O'Connor, was 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 on the yeah. show, and and he was uh, you know obviously telling his story and re, you know reflecting on that, and and he he said a similar kind of thing, but he was in a, in his cell, you know, he was uh, you know in prison at the time, and and I asked him the same kind of question because you you mentioned it as well that you know obviously. John and 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 yourself have got, had lifestyles that involved you know, using drugs of different kinds, and you know J- John himself said he, he had that much experience of drugs he could have been a pharmacist, you know, those kind of stuff. And yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. and then so I, I I kind of got the same question really because I asked him like I say, how did you know then? You you said that in this nightclub that in Ibiza that you felt the presence of God. How yeah. how did you know it was the presence of God? Um, at the time, rather than Honestly, any, you know, maybe high or something that you've from taken from a substance and stuff, maybe previously, I don't know. I knew the I knew the feeling. It is a good question. I knew the feeling of drugs because I took them that many. I was a, I was accomplished at taking them. I used to t- used to live live for it. So I knew it was different for that. But if you would have asked me yeah. the next day what happened, I wouldn't have been able to articulate. I wouldn't have been able to say it like I've said it there. Yeah, I knew something had happened. I knew I never wanted to take drugs again. It was it was the start of me coming to know God. Yeah. So it was kind of after that encounter, I'd I'd heard the Christians talk about God on that night. They'd give me the book, but it was kind of after that encounter that I started pursuing it more. I started reading the Bible and things yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and then you know. Like I said at the beginning of the show, like I do at most, most you know the episodes really. You know, obviously there's only one church, and when we talk about that, you know that's God's church, the people, His bride. You know, and and there's just as long as it's Bible based, there's lots of expressions or flavors, as I like to say, how people live that out and stuff. And um, you know, and, and when you said that, you know, obviously in East Side you went to the local church, and and you know, mainly older people, and 
you know, it wasn't a flavour, it wasn't an expression that kind of suited you, didn't reflect, like you said, it would say you weren't really on the same wavelength, you know, truth and stuff yeah. like that, but, um, but you know, you know, again, it, different flavour, and it wasn't until, like, you know, obviously you'd, uh, you, and again, you illustrate the importance of church, and church as in people, and, you know, be, yeah. doing life with other people, you know, Christians in particular, yeah. supporting one another, that really then that's when you, you know, start to take off, and, and uh, you know, obviously when you met, uh, you know, people from Tees Valley Community Church, amazing church and things like that, which is amazing. I'm yeah. just before we go any further, Tony. Um, I'm just going to put this on screen because Can I just say something. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, there, yeah please. Was, yeah, uh, yeah. It was when I because when people would say what what denomination are you? Yeah, I'd always say I'm no denomination. I'm just a Christian. Mm. And then I remember a bloke called Shane Claiborne doing a talk at Eden before, and he said, if someone says are you a Catholic, he says yeah. Someone says, hey, you're Protestant. He says, yeah, you're Pentecostal. Yeah, it's because we're all the same body. Yeah. And I thought, that's that's a better way to say it. Not I'm none, because then it's kind of like exclusive, but we yeah. are the body. It's, it's inclusive. We're, we're together. So, yeah, yeah I, I love that. I Ca- yeah, yeah, I'm Catholic. We, we, we love Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm Pentecostal. We love Jesus. It's, yeah. Yeah. And I should say, give the Church of England credit. The most I've ever saw the Holy Spirit move was at Soul Survivor. Yeah. Apart from that lighthouse and connect Middlesbrough, of course. Yeah. After that, it was <laughs> uh, Souls of Raven. That was Church of England running. The way the Holy Spirit was led by there by uh, Church of England minister was absolutely incredible. So yeah. yeah, it's not a slur on the Church of England. No. It was this at this time, and no, and, that, I, and I know you're saying that. I just wanted to make sure that wasn't coming across that I was. It didn't come yeah. across like that. No, you know, no, no yeah. it didn't. You know, ab- yeah. not, absolutely not. Um, and Soul Survivor, just in case you know, you're not people are not familiar with Soul Survivor. It's a huge uh, youth event or festival uh, camp. It happened for many, many years, and uh, you know, amazing place, amazing people, and you know, like you say, uh, Holy Spirit is certainly moving. Let me um, let me just go back to this because I was just going to you know put this on screen because Tony's just got a question, and we, we want to encourage this. Just obviously about yeah. then you know, you met in you know the, the presence of God. Mm-hmm in that nightclub in, in Ibiza, yeah. and then you, you knew that then God was wanting more from you to, you know, live, you know give yeah. yourself over to him, your body and stuff, and then you talked about not using yeah. drugs. So, you know, just, you know, I'll put it on screen again. That's just Tony's just asking, obviously, what was yeah. the yeah. kind of physical effects of doing that then? No, I mean, ecstasy was my drug of choice. That's what I used to love taking. I remember taking, so... In a, in a beef, it's all about the, the big nightclubs. I remember going to manumission in this night when I'd encounter God. Yeah. And then three nights later, we went to see my uh, favourite DJ, a man called Paul Van Dyke. This is 20 years ago. It was all the rage. <laughs> and, uh, and I remember all, all my friends were taking drugs and were saying, come on, and I was saying, it, it's not for me anymore. And, and, and then being puzzled kind of thing. And then we went to a beef uh, the year after and there was 30 people from Middlesbrough went there was only two of us not taking drugs so I wouldn't say it was a withdrawal mm. but an acknowledgement that the music and the nightclub are better taking drugs it's just a, it's just a better feeling it's 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 pleasure it's sin it's and uh so it wasn't a withdrawal but it was like I knew I could I would have enjoyed myself more with them but I knew that my life meant something now I knew my, that my life had purpose and had meaning yeah. and there was a direction I wanted my life to go and I knew taking drugs wasn't part of that I knew for for me yeah to, the way that God wanted me to live my life drugs couldn't be part of it so I remember when we were in a B for the year after I was on the you can't see I'm closing my eyes I was on the nightclub dance floor closing my eyes and then uh two of the lads were when I opened them, Tom, the lads were staring at me and said, I knew you were going to get off your head. And uh, I said, I said, I'm not, I'm, I'm praying. And they just, and then they just danced away. And I really felt that God wanted me in a beef to show people that you can have a good time without taking drugs. And this is what I believe was as Christian. We, we were showing a different way. And we were not yeah. like hiding away in a safe place. We've got to be in the friend of sinners in the in the thick of where people aren't shown. This is how you live your life. You don't yeah. say, "Come and watch how I live my life in this." In in my front room, we have this nice little holy huddle. We're, we're a friend of sinners. We're inside. We're outside. So mm. yeah, mm. nice one. 
Um, Alan's just jumped on here, and uh, you know, Alan Dean, and thanks, Alan, for posting this one. And, and this might lead us into, uh, if you like, the, you know, the next kind of stages with re- involvement with Lighthouse and uh, you know, Connect Middlesbrough, really. Uh, big question, you know, obviously from from Alan. I'm just going to put it on screen now and just kind of say, you know, why do you? I mean, he's asking directly to you. You know, why do you believe people who have been written off can change? You know, why why is that? You know, so. You know, because I know that obviously work with a huge amount of different people in in Connect yeah. and, and and so on for yeah. many years now. Well, Alan, good friend of mine, he five years ago he will have been written off by everyone. Right. <laughs> uh, I don't want to. I would. I don't want to publicly say his story, but he would. It was in. I mean. In and out, in and out of jail, heavily on drugs, uh, heroin addiction, and uh, and because he'd lived in that lifestyle, he, he was written off by people. Yeah. So he shared his uh, testimony at Connect Middlesbrough, and that's a man who's transformed. He's went from being uh, probably un- untrustworthy by the people who were closest to him yeah. to being uh, a father of two, married. Do you know what I mean? Somebody would say, I trust this man looking after my kids and looking after my house while I've gone all day for two weeks. Do you know what I mean? He's yeah. become a... So this is the this is the transformation about the Holy Spirit. So so for me, the Christian faith, I thought you explained it very well at the beginning. God's made the barrier, so we're no longer there. So we've got this tight relationship with God. Yeah. But we're not... We're not this close to God anymore. We're this close. We're one with him. Absolutely. My spirit and God's spirit are like this. We're never going to change. So in a relationship with God, praying, reading the Bible, worship, worshiping, my my spirit's entwined with him. So it's the, the Christian life is about transformation. So for a Christian to write somebody off, I know people don't like ranking sins. I don't mind ranking sins. I would say writing somebody off, in terms of being disgusting, it's got to be like in the top one percent. As a Christian and yeah. believe in the gospel, it should never be part of be part of our language. It should never be the part of where we see people. Uh, love hopes, love, love sees the best in people. Absolutely. We've got to see the best in people. So once, and I, I recognise if I aren't as intimate with Jesus, the first thing that goes in me is losing hope in people. Mm. I'm just like I, so I, I can subconsciously start writing people off or forget him. There's no point. He's let me down again. He's never going to turn up. They're never going to change. Yeah, yeah. And as soon as I start thinking like that, I'm, I'm like, I need to start getting more intimate with Jesus. And for me, it's it's only intimacy with God that can make you see like that. It's not, it's not like a Tony Robbins self help book. I'm gonna start seeing the best in people. Yeah. It's a it's a God thing. It's a relationship with the Lord. So I would expect people in the world to write people off. Mm. Of course, they don't they don't know anything else. But us as Christians, this is this is why we're the hope hope of the world. That's why we're constantly giving out hope and faith and belief because we believe in the gospel. Don't we, we believe in transformation? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and you know, you need to you know obviously look at the Bible, look at Jesus and the life and his ministry and what he was doing and. You know, he would spend his time willingly and choose to, you know, hang out with the lowest of the law, the written off, you know, the cast out, you know, whatever, the, whatever reason, you know, and he would be with them. And again, you know, you know, certainly, you know, he's ne- he doesn't write anybody off. And, and you know, like you say, we are one and we know him. And, and and like you said, it's it's looking at people and being with people, not just looking at them, but living with people through and looking at them through God's eyes. You know, calling out the gold as the in people as the phrase kind of goes, and that's so so important. So you know what you know, I, I see this all the time happening in um, you know in, in in not just your work, but you know uh, the amazing people that run the different connects, like John O'Connor. Like you say, we talk about Peter Conroy and, and and many others. You know, I see it in Brian Stella Jones, who amazing couple. Um, I just have so much respect and admiration for them, and. Um, you know, so you know, with the connect events and things like that, with lighthouse, you know. So, how did you get involved with you know, kind of lighthouse and and connect Middlesbrough and things like that? How did that happen? You know, and, and what what are you trying to achieve um, yeah. in those kind of opportunities when you come together? 
I suppose being a, being a Christian, recognizing, inviting people to St. Agnes Church yeah. when I'm like, God's real, and then I'm inviting my friends and that wasn't doing it for them. Taking people, my own experience of Tees Valley Church when I first started going, it's like 45 minutes for worship. I can't do that. So I didn't <laughs> intentionally turn up late. Now I'm, now I'm late a lot, but that's not intentionally. That's that's unintentional. But <laughs> you should intentionally go late. Like how can anybody talk? for 45 minutes and how can you pay attention i don't know if i've got adhd looking at the symptoms i i think i think i've got it we're <laughs> undiagnosed sitting there would be incredibly awkward i love listening to sermons while i'm washing up while i'm in the car but to sit still torture yeah. um so i found church in, in like incredibly difficult without wanting to exaggerate too much yeah. and then i've done the alpha course which is actually what got me connected into the church and I thought, this is amazing. It's built on food. It's built on friendship. It's built on conversation. Yeah. So I'd always thought, I'd look, and I hated Sunday morning. I hated getting up for, I hated getting up for church on Sunday morning. So I thought, I hate, sun, I hate Sunday morning. What I think works is alpha style. I think we all learn better in conversation. I think yeah. we grow better in, in friendship. So I thought, rather than a church being set out from the front, from in rows looking at the front to service someone's teaching you which psychologists say you only take five ten percent in a better way we learn is conversation and growing and asking a question i don't fully understand that will you grow will you will you talk a bit deeper on that yeah and build build relationships i don't believe the way sunday morning set up that you actually build relationships generally you, you you don't know people and you want to get out and all but a cup of tea doesn't really do at the end yeah so i'd always thought of a way that i wanted church to look food conversation uh worship and then when i'd went up to connect i was like this is amazing this is without being able to say what it was what i wanted they'd done it there yeah. and then was from T from an Alpha course we've done with some of Alan Dean's cousins and relatives. We uh, we wanted to start something lighthouse and Junction Forty Two. We're like let's let's have it as a middle of a connect. But I wanted it in Easter side and I wanted kids being able to come. Yeah. And Junction Forty Two wanted it no kids in the town centre. So we split, but we were more like a little brother than a. Do you know what I mean? Than a yeah. than a proper them leading us we were more like a, a little brother relative kind of thing so they were still helping us out without being official and then uh that's why we that's why we set up like that and then saint agnes the building that we were using this side has closed down it's, it's getting demolished so we thought this would be an ideal time to, to do it in adults only yeah fully in partnership with junction 42 and that's why we moved to the town center yeah yeah i mean obviously i mean i've been fortunate enough to to kind of come across and uh, you know lead the music kind of worship aspects and, and you know again amazing you know just the strength of relationship in there and you know like you say it's just reflecting uh, i totally agree actually you know uh, and thanks for saying that and you know obviously um it's quite it might have a few people raising their eyebrows about actually you know like you say you, you're right you don't get to know people in a, in a sunday morning service you know in the way that it is and actually it's a it's quite a, a passive kind of experience in the sense that you go in, you say hello to a few people, maybe some awkwardly, like you said, and and you sit and you listen, and and it's not an active experience, and and that might work for some because you know again I'm you know forgive me I'm I'm in education I'm a teacher you know that might work for some, um, but the majority of people you know like you say you don't you don't learn that way you know you, you can only take in so much so the opportunity to interact to talk. Um, and you know, again, we've talked many times on these from different people on these episodes about just how amazing alpha courses are. Where you know, like you say, the big motivational factor of food, first of all, it's natural, it's welcoming, yeah. smaller group discussions, and you get the opportunity just to have a chat with people yeah. and you know, really ask those questions. And like you say, tell me more about this and what about this. And so, yeah. listen, if you if if you don't do the church thing and 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 you uh, have questions, great. Get you know we get in touch you know just drop us a message you know DM us whatever it may be because we'd love to connect you um, to an alpha course or something you know that or churches do them many many different you know times and all in different ways uh, but there's an opportunity to uh, you know ask questions you know get in touch I'm sure we'll share a little bit later on about Tony's um, 
and contact details. But you know, whether it be with Tony, whether it be you know myself or, or wherever, we, we'd love to kind of just chat with you further about that. Uh, and, and I love yeah. it, you know, that cafe style kind of you know church works for me, you know. And and this is what I said yeah. earlier about, isn't it, about expressions and flavors and different ways of doing that, and it suits yeah. different people. Um, but yeah, like you say, I totally agree with what you're saying and, and so on. So you know, it's great that obviously um, Lighthouse and 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 we heard all about the amazing Junction Forty Two organization with John's episode last week and um, yeah. John Searle been on previously as well, who's, who's with Junction That's Forty Two. Um, yeah. And so, you know, it's it's amazing, you know, again, how that's working and so on. So interesting, that transition, actually, I didn't know that it's a transition from Lighthouse and, and then into kind of Middlesbrough Connect and so on. Now I'm seeing in Middlesbrough Connect you know, loads of great footage. I've not got across there yet, um, yeah. but I'm looking forward to the time when I can. Um, and just, uh, you know, I've seen loads of great footage just recently of, you know, that just people obviously recording it and sharing on the social channels like Facebook and so on. Just the amazing it kind of stuff that's incredible. happening. You would, I know you would, I know you would expect me to say that, but it's incredible. There was probably two weeks ago, uh, worship. I was like, I can't remember enjoying worship this much. It was just unbelievable how good it was. It's yeah. just, and uh, we probably get. Oh my God, we have a lot. La- you can imagine putting food on in the town centre. We have a large. We have a lot of people in there from the hostels and are yeah. homeless right. and. Uh, it seemed like they're addicted but the, some leave after the food but lords don't and the way they continue to engage in the worship run through the talk it's a miracle in itself really and uh to to see people worship like that it is it's just a different noise from church it's more like a football yeah kind of when you're it's yeah it's cold it's class yeah it's interesting i mean you know it's great first of all that um you know, like you just said there, because of the food and, you know, you, you're meeting people with lots of different kind of backgrounds and challenges and issues and, and like you say, in mm-hmm. circumstances, you know, maybe living in the hostel, etc. you know, and it's, but you, again, it's, it's demonstrating like Pete did, like the other guys that were on that bus in Middlesbrough that when you met them, giving out soup and they were being, you know, just showing, demonstrating the love of Jesus and in a practical kind of way of feeding people and, and just, you know, loving on them and, um, and then, uh, you know, like you say, it's great to kind of be able to kind of build relationships. And yeah, you know, yeah. That, um, that's why I joined Tees Valley Community Church because they were giving out the on the Alpha course. They were giving out food, and I thought if if a church is prepared to pay money for people who aren't Christians to come in, yeah, and eat, and all now I now I realise all churches do this. I thought that's just incredible. Just how generous the church is. There's, there seems to be a there is a mindset in the world that the church just want your money, and it could not be further away from the truth. Yeah, every single church that I'm part of, they're always looking about how we can bless the area. It doesn't matter with with food, with time, with with youth clubs and whatever it is. The church is the most generous you could possibly yeah. imagine. If you think of how much every every day of the week and i know before COVID, every day of the week in middlesbrough two and three times a day churches were giving out food and and that's out of the church's pocket churches yeah. are so given it's unbelievable so yeah, yeah it's, it's it's attractive how, how generous the church is really is attractive yeah i mean you know obviously i don't want to exaggerate as well um myself because i'm not entirely sure all the statistics but you know you, yeah. you know nationally there's a huge amount of food banks you know, because, you know, again, the circumstances that people feel or find themselves in for whatever reason, um, you know, and and I would say, I'm going to say the large majority, because I don't know the stats, but certainly locally, I know so many churches are involved in, um, you know, serving the community in a practical way by providing food and things like that. You know, obviously, locally, we've got the amazing uh, community grocers, you know, the kind of shop that's in Ragworth and so on. Uh, as part of the you know Eden project and all of that you know again we've had uh, people coming and talking about that as well we've had Terry Young coming on and, and as part of yeah, a show that we've had well worth having a look at that as well um, but you know again like you say it, the church stepping up and and wanting to practically show the love of Jesus you know and and be his hands and his feet you know you know obviously mm-hmm. in, in whatever that looks like in the community just being there for people um, and supporting yeah. them. You know, meeting yeah. the needs because people are hungry. You know, physically, and then you know, hopefully having a conversation as well, just to meet that need. You know, hungry spiritually as well. 
um, and, yeah. and you know, giving, tell, you know, there is hope and showing and demonstrating hope in lots of different ways, like you say. Um, amazing. So, so I mean, as always, Tony, I always say this as well. You know, I, I sound like a stuck record, but time seems to speed up when we do these sessions. And so I'm just conscious that, you know, we've got about, let's just say about 10 minutes left, which will take us just after nine. We did start just after eight. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's amazing stuff. Obviously, it's great to hear your story and, and, and you know, how you, God's impacting you and it's clear your passion, your love for him and your passion to serve him is, is quite clear and, and, and so many different things that you're doing. And, you know, I'm fortunate I see that in action as well and get to see you doing this stuff, which is amazing and it's inspirational. Um, but, I'm, I'm, you know, why don't we just chat then, because we said we'd come back to it, you know, obviously about your role then in, in being a counsellor, you know, because that's, that's something that's happened fairly recently. And, and you know, yeah. again, you, you said it's an absolute you know, amazing role and opportunity that you, yeah. you know, part of that, was it Chief, I can't remember Chief what you said. Chief, yeah. Yeah. Chief Executive's team, whatever is the right title yeah. for it. But, you know, opportunity yeah. then to kind of feed into practically shaping uh, what the council is doing for your area. Um, yeah. How did that come about then? Um, when I started running t to be a, independent council i'd met andy preston maybe eight years ago at a charity event uh friends on facebook and that kind of thing got on with him really well yeah thought then he's a great bloke now i think now he's even better i do i do think he's class and so i, I suppose through through connecting with him it was a big help for me campaigning and things like that yeah and then after i become uh a counselor it was it was um talked about this neighborhood safety role about getting neighborhood watches going and how it could be how to make the town safer and uh steph because i wasn't sure if it was too much but steph my wife was a massive encouragement actually because yeah. um i'd done a degree in from like 2004 to 7 on uh why do young people commit crimes so i'd done psychology sociology criminology and I interviewed some of the lads I'd worked with. Some went to jail. Some got a job and sorted themselves out. Yeah. So I had like education background in it, and then I also had like experience because I'd worked as a youth worker for so many years, and now now working with adults. Yeah. Often with Junction Forty Two people in and out of jail. Just went to visit someone in jail yesterday. It's like so I had that experience, and I had ideas of how to make. Middlesbrough a safer place and but not just this is a Tony Blair it's not just uh tough on crime tough on the causes of crime so it's like it's not just we've got to punish people it's got we've got to stop people before we, before we get there so I have a few ideas of how we could do that better and because I've got a lot of connections in communities and in churches it's just put me in a good position to do some things that I'm really like excited by yeah 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 so tell us a bit about the role then. Obviously, you know, what does that actually look like then in terms of feeding into the neighbourhood safety and so on? I'll tell you another couple of the things that I'm excited by at the minute. One of the, uh, because there's just not the money, austerity and things like that, there's not the, there's not the money in youth work. What what I'm trying to promote is people like me, Steph, and what we're doing in Easterside. It's people from the community blessing their, their own community and, and doing their bit. So in Hemlin and the council said there's a there's a like there's the kids said there's Hemlin and there is a like a lot of antisocial behaviour at the minute like yeah. stuff you'd think how on earth is that happening and like a lawless windows being smashed I was set on fire pulling lampposts down it's rid absolutely ridiculous the the police are getting a lot better there's been thirty seven arrests since February which is good news not the stepping up but the one at the boxing gym. So we went to have a look at the boxing gym and I th th phoned some of my friends who grew up in Hamilton uh, from a boxing. Out of the four, the lads, three of them are Christians. So we've, we've been meeting with them to get a boxing gym going in the area. And I thought, oh, what right. amazing is this? Just from connections, from boxing, from church that we can get lads in there. So we're going to get this Hamilton boxing gym up and running. I thought, I've helped that happen. That would have just been an idea from the council and we want to do this, but we don't actually know how to do it. But because I've got Amazing. the contacts and know people and things like that, just, just being able to get that going is incredible. Some of my friends 
two lads who are baptised, uh, one five years, one a couple of years ago, they were running a youth club in Groville. Absolute chaos. The right thing, the right lads, but just a bit safeguarding, not quite there. And again, it got took off a bit with a rat stumbling block, but through the Genesis Youth Project, who I've got a good relationship through the council, them just being able to... That looks like that's going to get up and running again in the next month or so. Fantastic. So again, it's been in the position. This <clears throat> having a role, neighbourhood say like people listen to you. <laughs> it's just the do listen to you and, and and respond to you. And in that position, you've got a position of authority and trust. So I'm really like excited by the things that are that are happening and you have the things to do. I know safe families. I've heard of safe families yeah. through the church, and I think the idea of safe families is phenomenal parents that were struggling me and Steph are luckily we've got my father-in-law living with us now my mum and dad live around the corner having a close family unit is so important mm. for some families who don't have that I think how do they cope it must be such a struggle yeah. but to have someone like say families who would get alongside I'll take the kids for a weekend I'll I'll give you guidance on be a better but a lot of the people just don't know about it enough so what I'm encouraging with the councillors let's shine a light on safe families let's encourage volunteers to come in and get on board let's us as a council let's promote it let's take away any stigma where the, the to do with social services and we're going to get in trouble with this now the, the, the bless you the encourage you the help you the support you and i think like i say with there's a, a a couple of things that i'm involved with but it's more like the years of experience as a community worker and been having ideas yeah now having the resources and the and the people to do it, it's just yeah, it's it's very exciting. I do love it's it. It's amazing, mate. It really is. And uh, yeah. so, you know, how long are you going to give it before you run for mayor? <laughs> when Andy steps down. All right, <laughs> you've got a lot of respect for this guy. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> Love it, love it. So, listen, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just kind of put your contact details on screen because, um, and that'll be the kind of full view of you, really. You know, of 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 yourself because, yeah, you know, we've heard so many great things, and you know, again, it's in, it's exciting, it's, it's inspiring to hear you talking about what you're involved with with the council and so on, as well as you know, connect and Junction Forty Two and everything else. Um, you know, how can people then support? You? How can they support Connect? How can they support you in your role as a councillor and things like that? How, you know, what's the best way to kind of do that? Connect the best. It's most Christian ministries. What they rely on is people, prayer, pounds. Yeah. <laughs> uh, people, prayer, pounds. Come, come, connect. It's it's to be part of it, isn't it? It's the it's it's to come and get stuck in and join. And yeah, I think what tends to happen. What's always happened in me in my life is you join something and then it's it's step by step it's not generally i say right i've got a role for you yeah and you and you come and do it you come and see where you fit don't you, you come and join in see what person you connect with see where there's a gap see where see where there's a stirring with you yeah if you you love jesus and you love people i would encourage you to come and get alongside connect there's so many people so many broken people who come who need an encouragement who need someone to get alongside and meet from the, there's no way that i can be meeting people and a lot of the people in there with the same full-time jobs families were looking for people to come out and get alongside i would particularly say retired people if people have retired and you come to come to connect and see who we could get alongside yeah a lot of people who are retired or, or middle class, they say, oh, they don't they don't relate to me or they're not the same or I can't understand the background. But I always say the same thing. If you think about who's had the biggest influence in your life, who is it who's had the same hobbies or the same interests or the person who's listened to you and the person who loved you, the person who's there, the person who's there to guide. And so I would just encourage you, to just to come down and see where you fit, see if there's a hole, see if there's a see if there's a part, and don't come one week and say I want to do this. Come and come and be part of it. Come yeah. four weeks, six weeks, and immerse yourself in it. Yeah, nice one. Yeah. So you know, I mean, obviously, I'm just conscious of the time, Tony. You know, like I say, we it's about nine o'clock now, but I just want to I want to put a couple of things on here already that people are commenting. So Tony Fraser, you know, again, I just put that on the screen. You know, again, she's. You know, like many of us have found it really inspiring. Thanks, yeah. Tony. So, you know, yeah. again, you know, thank you so much for, for sharing that. And I just want to put the, the comment on as well by Alan Dean as well, who's who's kind of commenting. He's just, you know, again, just appreciating you for what you're doing and you're making a big difference. And you can see that and you can tell. Yeah. 
uh, making a big difference to a lot of people and you know it's amazing mate, obviously what you're yeah. involved with and what you're doing and uh, the opportunities that God's providing for you, you know, He's using your, like you say, uh, the gifts that He's He's given you, your skill set, your experiences, your contacts, and you know, to make a, a you know huge difference in the community. And you know, like I said, I said right at the very top of the show was was you know, embrace lives about celebrating what God's doing through His church, through His people across the region, across the land, you know, across the, the world, you know. And again, it's been a a great episode, to, you know, to hear your story and what you're passionate about and excited about and and what you know the impact of that is which is great yeah thanks Dave thanks for having me on and thanks for what you're doing it's shining shining light on these different ministries across the town there's so much good news to be shared there is in yeah. Teesside there's so much good news and it, it's helpful for people to hear it it's uh it's like last thing I was having a talking about today one of the things I want to do with the neighborhood safety is as a resident of the month award so what we're going to do is each in each ward have a resident where you like where they get an award just it might just be i, I go do my neighbor's shopping for the for the week and yeah. uh or I, I take my neighbor's bins out and things like that but i think shining the light on things like that it lifts it it lifts things it's encouragement and that's what you're doing here it's an it's an encouragement that we as christians we need to keep being encouraged God is moving. God is doing different yeah. things. There's a lot of different flavors, expressions, and it's uh, it's exciting what he's doing in Teesside, without a doubt. It's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's a big part of the the vision for for you know Embrace Live is 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 not it, you know hopefully people don't get the the wrong you know it it is about exactly what you've just said. It's not about promoting Embrace Church in Darlington. We're just a small part of the church across the you know the region across the world. You know, and, but like you say, shining a light on. And exactly those things. It's amazing. Thank you for for giving up your time tonight. I know you're a busy fella, and I know um, we've kind of had to jump on a, a couple of yeah. dates, and you know we, we but you know we, we got there in the end, which is great. So yeah. you know, I think if you you and John O'Connor, you know, problematic people in my hit list. Under no, no, that's not true. Just trying to tie down <laughs> our dates, but it's great. We actually one after the other on the same week. It's amazing. I know you're amazing. Yeah. Bless you, mate. Well, if if you hang on, I'm we'll just I'm just going to wrap things up now. Um, yeah, but we're going to just quickly chat with you afterwards, if that's all right. When Thanks. we go off air, Thanks. all right. Thanks, Dave. Bless Thanks, you, man. mate. Thank you for all that you're doing. All right. So, Thanks. um, just you know, what an amazing like to say opportunity there, just to hear from Tony and and his story. But all, like we've just been talking about, you know, shining a light on what God is doing across the region through his church and uh, if you want to get in touch with uh, tony like i said i did you know put his um contact details on facebook's probably the best way to do that we said uh just do a search for tony grange and uh, you'll soon um you'll soon see him obviously on there don't get him confused with conor mcgregor like i say that's a different guy <laughs> he is laughing that's okay phew um so you know obviously get involved like tony said we you know connect follow them on socials you know like to say uh get yourself down just see where you fit and so you can get alongside people um you know and it's, it's great to to you know a great organization like to say to be able to kind of practically demonstrate the love of god you know meet the needs you know, hunger, etc., spiritual hunger as well. All right. Um, so, like I said earlier, we, you know, it'd be really helpful as we kind of wrap up for tonight if you can head over to, uh, you know, YouTube and just do a search for Embrace Church Darlington and just subscribe to our channel. If you want to know more about Embrace Church in Darlington, we'd love to kind of get in touch with you. You can head over to our website and have a look there. Obviously, you've found us on our Facebook page. So, you know, feel free to drop us a message and things, whatever you want to do. Um, but like I say, you know, actually Wednesdays, eight o'clock, there's a little kind of shot about some of the people coming up. Some of those are featured already. Wonderful people. I've got many others. In fact, like I said last week, and I'll say it again, set your reminders eight o'clock on a Wednesday, because I've got people booked in every week now until uh, end of July, we're into August and I'm thinking September as well. So, you know, I will take a bit of a break um, in, in August, but maybe do a couple of pre-recorded ones whilst I'm having my jollies somewhere. Um, but listen, there's, there's loads of people coming up because we just want to, like Tony said, I love that phrase, shine a light on what God is doing. All right. And celebrate all that he's doing and the, the amazing people that make up his church in our region. Okay. Um, take care. Have a really good week. Bless you. Um, feel free to get in touch. It'd be lovely to connect with you. Take care. Bye-bye.